Hey, welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Saturday, the 25th of January, 2025. It's been a whole week since I've been able to get out here and do any work in the shop. So you haven't missed anything. Uh, if you tuned in to the last session, last Saturday, it was a destruction session. Uh, I set out to remove a couple of rivets I wasn't happy about right here and end up, ended up just making a mess and struggling for about three hours to remove the end rib because I was going to have to replace it. And here's why. This is how this thing turned out when trying to push out the back end of this uh, rivet. So to learn more about that, you can go back and watch that episode. This will once again go back in the corner of shame. Uh, today I'm going to just spend a little bit of time, uh, getting a new rib ready to go back in this spot. Um, I still have a ton of real work to do, which is why I haven't been out here. Uh, this is sort of uh, crunch time for my bookkeeping business as I'm getting, uh, businesses ready for tax time. Uh, so yeah, there's that. And I'll also probably do a little, um, explanation of the Cherry Max uh, rivet gauge right here because I spent a little bit of time with that this morning to figure out what size Cherry Max rivets I need for a couple of spots over here related to the unfastened um, aileron bracket and the doubler that goes behind it as well as a couple of rivets um, where the flap brace meets up with the aft spar. So <sighs> gosh man I want to be out here doing this stuff, but I really do have to do actual work. So I'll get a little bit done today and then um, hopefully, hopefully this week uh, I will close out all of that busy real work stuff and get back to spending too much time working on the airplane. So that's it for the introduction. Let's build an airplane. See you on the other side. Okay. As you can probably tell, nothing has moved in the shop since last week. I've got just a huge mess over there on the workbench that I need to get sorted out. Um, not only have I had a ton of work to do this week and I've just been kind of locked down in the office, it has been cold and um, we had a snowstorm here in East Texas, which is extremely rare. I'm sure you probably had a snowstorm as well. Um, and so it was like in the 20s inside the garage, um, which wasn't really conducive to coming out late at night and doing any work. And also part of the work that I need to do is in preparation of that rib is to prime it and not great conditions for doing that. But as I will find out um, here in today's work session, as I get past the point of just cleaning up the mess and putting everything away and starting to evaluate um, the result of all of that business that went on last week. I'll find out that um, it's going to take me a little longer than I had hoped um, to repair the <laughs> repair the flap that I just built. Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I had mentioned... Uh, previously that in removing that rib, it's really a struggle to uh, drill out those those big um, AN470 rivets that are tying that whole bracket assembly together, especially when you get under that curved uh, leading edge that hangs down over. And in there, um, one of those holes was walled out so badly that I don't think that upsizing it is an option. Um, I'm not gonna do anything about it right now. Um, I'm going to wait until Monday and talk to builder support and see if um, making a doubler is a suitable repair or if if, ugh, if I just need to, um, hmm. Yeah, if I can't make a doubler, uh, because uh, if I can't make a doubler for that, um, I would need to um, pull that spar out, which is 
then kind of begs the question, do I even um, try to repair this assembly or just rebuild the flap uh, from scratch? So I'll wait till I find out. Um, yeah, there's one hole in there that is, um, yeah, just so badly boogered up that even uh, going up to a dash five rivet is too small. Um, I, I squeezed my calipers in there and I measured that um, at the widest point of that wallowed out hole to be about three sixteenths of an inch. In other words, a dash six rivet is what it would be. And I don't even think that if I were to drill it up to that size um, and find um, a suitable um, rivet to fill that spot, if it would have adequate edge distance once that once it was upsized. So yeah, we'll see what they say. So basically what I did is farted around a little bit and did prep work on that rib that was going to go in there, got it clecoed into place, and then kind of took a look at some of the other uh, holes that um, got messed up in there. And it may be a case that I need to rebuild that that bracket assembly. So those two separate parts, certainly the 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 part that mounts that mounts against the web of the inboard spar that one one of those holes got chamfered um, too badly and there wouldn't be enough um, wouldn't be enough edge distance if I were to try to upsize that hole so that that piece does need to be rebuilt and that's not something that I have uh, I'll take another look but I don't think I have any scrap laying around that would be suitable for that but uh, don't quote me on that. I'll take another look over in the corner of shame. I know that I don't have anything on the new parts, new parts shelf that I could use. In terms of the, the forward-facing bracket, that piece of angle that mounts on the forward side of the front spar, the other part of that um, bracket assembly, I do have enough um, remaining angle uh, to rebuild that piece. So... We'll see uh, what happens. So this this turned out to be a one hour, actually just a little less, about a uh, nine tenths of an hour session, and no actual really building occurred. It was more like assessing damage and trying to make decisions. So that's how that went. That was pretty disappointing. It's not like I don't have a ton of other things that I can be doing on these wings right now. So if I have to wait a little while to get back into this flap, I'll put it on the shelf and I think I'll start working on um, making the, um, the actuating arms or torque tubes or whatever they're called for the ailerons. So here in just a second, um, as promised, I'll give you a little uh, look at the Cherry Max rivet and rivet gauge uh, situation. Okay, as promised, let's talk a little bit about Cherry Max rivets. Here's one right here. Here on the aft spar, I have um, a few places that I need to um, replace some rivets that are too difficult for me to set properly. And I already talked to Vans Builder Support, and in these situations, a Cherry Max rivet is suitable, uh, a suitable replacement for structural solid rivets. Um, the naming, uh, the way that the Cherry Max rivets are described is a little bit different than they are for regular solid rivets. The diameter of the rivet, uh, this is a dash four, that's the same. That's four thirty seconds of an inch in diameter, but the length of the rivet is described differently. When we talk about uh, solid rivets, the length is described in sixteenths of an inch, and it's describing the entire length of the rivet below the head. Whereas the grip length of a pull rivet, Cherry Max rivet, is describing um, the amount of material to be gripped, so the thickness of the stack of material. So we have a cherry uh, grip gauge here to help us figure that out. And what we do is, you see there's a little um, protrusion on the bottom of this. What we wanna do is stick it into the material that we're trying to determine the grip length and then pull it back up until we catch uh, till we catch that little knot and then back it out and then we can read on the scale here where we're at and it looks like this is um, a the grip length of six or six sixteenths um, in other words three eighths if you want to but that's what we're looking for so what we're looking for is a CR 2313 4-7 or rather 4-6 uh, cherry rivet for 
that hole and for this hole and for that hole and those are on order from aircraft spruce so that does it for this one